Technology is developing faster and faster, and today we're using more energy and computation than ever. Everyone's talking about creating more powerful chips, but what if we could make the ones we already have more powerful? Microchips can only do but so much, and in order for the world to progress, the algorithms that run the code on these chips need to change. This is where the new Google DeepMind stepped in to save the day. They've generated a new AI that will not only change the way we program computers, but the digital world as a whole. And we get into it on this episode of AI Focus. And stay till the end to see how Google Cloud has facilitated generative AI's first appearance in the healthcare industry. Microchips are reaching their physical limits, but Google DeepMind has a plan to make them more sustainable and powerful. This plan is called Alpha Dev, an AI system that uses reinforcement learning to discover enhanced computer science algorithms. And these algorithms will be beyond anything ever built by engineers and scientists over the years. One of these newly discovered algorithms is a faster method for something called sorting, a method for ordering data. These sorting algorithms are used every day to rank online search results and even determine how data is processed on computers and phones. Oh yeah, and for my developers, it's open sourced. I'm gonna link it in the description. If I forget, just drop a comment. But for my AI lovers that are not developers and have no idea what sorting is, let me explain. Sorting is exactly what it sounds like. It's the organization of a set of items into a particular order, whether it be alphabetizing or numerical or what have you. Today, there are many different sorting techniques and algorithms and code bases that organize data around the globe. These algorithms took decades to develop and they're so efficient that it's pretty hard to find room for improvement. And these algorithms are in the Bible of computer science located right in the book of Genesis. Here's a simple example of what a sorting algorithm does. The unsorted numbers are on top. It goes through the sorting algorithm and then the sorted numbers are the output. AlphaDev knew that searching through existing algorithms for faster ones was nearly impossible to do. So it started from scratch and it began looking in the computer's assembly instructions. Assembly instructions are used to create binary code for computers to put into action. And you know, the older I get, the more I see how life really resembles the movie The Matrix. This is very reminiscent of how some of the real world people in the movie would have special abilities to decipher the famous little green code that represented the simulated reality in The Matrix. That may have been the biggest reach in history, but I'm standing by it. Anyway, developers write in high-level coding languages like Python, but it must be translated into instructions for computers to understand. Google DeepMind says, We believe many improvements exist at this lower level that may be difficult to discover in a higher-level coding language. Computer storage and operations are more flexible at this level, which means there are significantly more potential improvements that could have a larger impact on speed and energy usage. This illustration shows high-level coding language being changed into assembly instructions by a compiler and then turned into binary code that the computer can run by an assembler. Here, figure A shows a C++ algorithm sorting two elements. Figure B shows its assembly representation. So how was AlphaDev trained? I'm glad you asked. AlphaDev is based on AlphaGo, the reinforcement learning model that kicked world champion chess, Go, and Shogi players butts. I mean, just look at how AlphaGo stressed its opponent to the point where he had to go outside and contemplate his life. And take a look at how AlphaGo starts the process from scratch, just like AlphaDev. And what it has to do is learn for itself completely from self-play. So the reason that playing against itself enables it to do so much better than using strong human data is that First of all, AlphaGo always has an opponent of just the right level. So it starts off extremely naive. It starts off with completely random play. And yet, at every step of the learning process, it has an opponent, a sparring partner, if you like, that's exactly calibrated to its current level of performance. And to begin with, these players are very, very weak. But over time, they become progressively stronger and stronger and stronger. People tend to assume that machine learning is all about big data and massive amounts of computation. But actually, what we saw in AlphaGo Zero is that algorithms matter much more than either compute or uh, data availability. In fact, in AlphaGo Zero, we use more than an order of magnitude less computation than we used in previous versions of AlphaGo, and yet it was able to perform at a much higher level due to using much more principled algorithms than we had before. AlphaDev takes this intelligence beyond gaming to science and real-world challenges. To train it to uncover new algorithms, the team transformed sorting into a single-player assembly game. On each turn, 
AlphaDev observes the algorithm it's generated and the information contained in the CPU. Then it plays by choosing an instruction to add to the algorithm. This is really difficult because AlphaDev has to search through a ridiculously large amount of possible combinations to find an algorithm that can both sort and be faster than the current best one. And the number of possible combinations of instructions are similar to the number of particles in the universe. Let that sink in. The algorithm is fed test input sequences, then it generates an output. AlphaDev then checks that it's correct by comparing the algorithm's output with the expected results. AlphaDev is rewarded for sorting numbers correctly and based on how quickly and efficiently it does so. Finally, AlphaDev wins the game by discovering a faster program. AlphaDev discovered new sorting algorithms that improved the LLVM libc++ sorting library that were up to 70% faster for shorter sequences. Here, Google DeepMind said, We focused on improving sorting algorithms for shorter sequences of 3-5 to five elements. These algorithms are among the most widely used. Improving these algorithms can lead to an overall speedup for sorting any number of items. The team has also reverse engineered the algorithms and translated them into C++, one of the most popular coding languages. As a matter of fact, all of their new sorting algorithms are open sourced in the main C++ library. Millions of developers and companies are already using them on new AI applications involving everything from online shopping to supply chain management. This is the first change to this part of the library in a decade, and the first time an algorithm designed through reinforcement learning has been added to this library. AlphaDev not only finds faster algorithms, it's just straight up innovating. Its sorting algorithms can save a single instruction each time they're applied. This could be huge because these algorithms are used trillions of times per day. This signature move has been dubbed the old swap and copy and it's reminiscent of AlphaGo's Move 37 that defeated a legendary Go player. Ooh. That's a very, that's Ooh. a very surprising move. I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was a mistake. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen Move 37. So I actually had to poke around in AlphaGo to see what AlphaGo thought. And AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. AlphaGo said there was a 1 in 10,000 probability that move 37 would have been played by a human player. So it knew that this was an extremely unlikely move. It went beyond its human guide and it came up with something new and, and creative and different. When everyone else is confused, who's not confused, right? Besides the machine. In the swapping copy, AlphaDev skips a step to connect items in a way that looks like a mistake, but turns out to be a shortcut. It's finding new solutions to improving computer science algorithms by itself. But Google DeepMind wasn't satisfied with just sorting. No, they wanted to see if AlphaDev could tackle another computer science algorithm, hashing. Hashing is an algorithm used to retrieve, store, and compress data. These algorithms help users know what they're looking for and exactly where to find it by taking data like a username and hashing it or turning the raw data into a unique set of characters. The computer uses this hash to retrieve the data quickly instead of having to search all the data. AlphaDev discovered a hashing algorithm 30% faster than the most commonly used hashing algorithm in data structures. It was released into the open source Absil library and it's being widely used. Meanwhile, Google Cloud is teaming up with medical professionals at the Mayo Clinic, one of the top hospital systems in the US to create a new generative AI tool that will give them the ability to quickly find patient information. If successful, this tool will result in less stress for doctors. The Mayo Clinic is testing the new service called Enterprise Search that allows clients to create their own chatbots using Google's technology to search through tons of internal data. This is important because now, workers can get a patient's medical records or labs more quickly with a single query even if the info is stored across separate locations or in different formats. Generative AI App Builder allows you to create applications focused around search and chat experiences with minimal coding required. One of the most challenging problems to solve for an organization can be discoverability of information. Many times, data will be scattered across a bunch of different sources. Some might be in docs, some might be in databases, others in web pages. This makes it difficult for employees and customers to find just what they're looking for, whether it be internal data or on a public site. Google wants to be the first to use generative AI successfully in the medical space, and the Mayo Clinic is literally the best place it could have hoped for. 
The tool will be tested for different use cases in the coming months, but it's already been helpful for clinicians who usually experience burnout with administrative tasks. Say a physician needs to see info about a group of female patients ages 45 to 55, including their mammograms and medical charts. They can just enter that query into the search tool and get everything they need instead of searching for each element separately. This is going to save a lot of time and we'll have a lot more happy doctors. Healthcare is a tricky industry for generative AI though, as AI is susceptible to things like hallucinations and there's no room for error when people's lives are in play. But that's why Google is taking a safety approach, slowly rolling it out and testing it in the best hospital system available. The new service keeps privacy a priority and even is compliant with HIPAA, which is cool. Google Cloud and the Mayo Clinic signed a 10-year partnership deal in 2019 with Google Cloud set up to be the cornerstone of the Mayo Clinic's digital transformation. This move is the first step in that partnership. If this goes well, I could see that deal extending. These Google developments are impressive, but I should mention that the moves almost every major company is making in the AI race are impressive from Microsoft to Google DeepMind to Meta to OpenAI. AlphaDev has already demonstrated real-world impact and could possibly develop AI tools that could optimize the entire computing world. Researchers are currently exploring how to bring AlphaDev skills to high-level programming languages as there are limitations in the assembly space as the algorithm grows. The impact this could have on the computing world is huge. Does this mean companies don't need to develop these super powerful chips they've been working on? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.